Hi y'all, Kayla with Live Oak Nest. Welcome back to my home. Today I'm going to be doing a box opening with a maker studio and sharing with you what is inside of their winter maker box. So this box is full of awesome craft supplies and projects that I've never done before. So I'm so excited to dig in and get to work. So I'm also going to do a couple of the projects that are included in the box. So y'all come on over and let's get started. Hey y'all, Kayla with Live Oak Nest. I'm so excited to share with you today's box. We are doing a maker studio. This is their winter maker box. So this is one of my favorite craft boxes. Um, not only can you use the things in it over and over and over again, but it actually comes with like these little recipe cards and what you need to make each one of the items. So this fun one, lotion bars, alcohol ink art, so these cute little pieces, stationery, a pillowcase, picture frame, look, I love the little scallops. And then when you order the box, it automatically puts you into their maker club which you can join their Facebook groups and I believe you get special um, discounts and coupon codes too. So let's see what all is in here. I love this box because like I would never go buy all of this, like all these supplies separately to do it because you know, I mean, I don't know if I'm gonna do it. I don't know if I'm gonna like it. You know, it's just, it's a lot. To have to go buy all of this stuff but this way like it's just it's such a great way to test out um a new craft and these are so awesome for like valentine's day so here's a little mold so comes with the silicone mold cool 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 and then the coconut oil and a little vitamin E, the beeswax, the cocoa butter, the little oil. So cute. Okay, let's see what's in here. And these are gonna be all the little alcohol inks, which I have not used their alcohol inks before. So like these are just, it's such a fun way to try different crafts, different projects, brown, gold, black, and white. So I've not worked with these before, so that'll be fun. The One Step Paint in Ball House Buff, I like this color. I used it on some urns that I made. And this is Lady Singing the Blues One Step Paint. She sends little chip brushes. Um, that little brush. And then this cute little frame. Cute, cute, cute. I love all the little scallops. And then some paper to make little cards. The pillowcase. Um, another paintbrush. And then um, gel art inks and wax. And then the stencils, which I always love. Cute. Turn them this way. I love all of these little text phrases. This little bee pattern, that's cute. And then this one. Cute, cute, cute. For the for starters, I'm gonna do this little picture frame because I think this is super cute. Um, and I think I'm gonna do something for spring and do a little printable and put in there. That'll be so cute. So I'm gonna do this project for now and I think I'm gonna do this one too because I love, 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 love the idea of this. I'm gonna get started working on the frame first. 
So the first thing I'm going to do is open this little cute frame up and then I'm going to give it a good solid coat of paint and I'm going to use the um, one step paint and the Ball House buff to put on a base coat. So I decided to do a layering look with my paint so after the um, white was dry I went in with some of the Slow as Molasses Chalk Art which is a brown color and added another coat on top of my white coat and then I'm just going to be layering up paints throughout this process um, to get the look that I'm going for. So I wanted to add in a little bit of a lighter brown so I used the um, Slow as Molasses Chalk Art and mixed it with a little bit of the um, white chalk art that I had on hand and it wasn't quite light enough so I poured in just a little bit of the Ball House buff to get it just a little bit lighter and then once I had that all nicely mixed up I'm going to kind of dry brush it on to the picture frame. Okay, so now I'm gonna add in a little bit of the chalk art ink. This is the color I reckon and it's white. And I'm using a palette knife to apply the paint to the frame. I love the look this gives. It gives it a lot of texture. It kind of makes it look distressed. Um, kind of like I would be putting on several layers and sanding in between, but I really liked the look this gave me. Once that white was dry, I wanted to add a little bit of gold, so I'm mixing a little bit of the metallic copper and metallic gold in the gel art ink. All of these items are from a maker studio, but not all of them come in this um, particular box. So once I had those mixed up well, I'm going to take that palette knife again and just do the same um, process and layer on some gold paint. So once that gold is dry, I'm going to go back in with my palette knife and I'm using the brown color again and then I'll go back in one final time with the white um, and just kind of layer it on top and kind of helps blend everything together without making it look quite so messy. Once this final coat of the white is dry, I'm going to go in with my stencil. I'm using one of the stencil sheets that came in the winter maker box and this is the stencil that they um, used in their recipe card but I'm going to use um, gold ink to apply the artwork to the frame and so I'm just using some of the gold that was left over and I'm going to um, apply it on my stencil. So I'm applying it sparingly over the frame. I'm not doing it solid. I just would kind of add a little, lift it up, see if I liked it, place it back down, add a little bit more. Um, and I really liked the, the look of this. It's not perfect. It looks aged and it has a lot of character. And I think it really turned out pretty. So there's a final look at how the frame looks. So now I'm gonna create a little piece of art to put inside of it. You could do a digital download. I have several of those on my website that would fit nicely, but I decided to go ahead and make a little piece of art. I'm going to um, trim out a piece of scrapbook paper here. And then I have this stencil from a maker studio. It's called Birds and Berries. And if you know me, you know I love birds. And I love this little bird. So I'm gonna stencil on this bird onto this scrapbook paper. And then I'm gonna place that into my frame and have a little piece of spring artwork. So you can see that I decided to put a little bit of blue tape on this stencil. I didn't want to cut this stencil apart because it's a pattern and I want to be able to use it on a piece of furniture in its entirety. So I just laid it down and then I'm using blue painter's tape to tape off um, the, the areas that I don't want ink. Isn't this stencil just so pretty? I love this stencil. So once that was done, I popped it in the frame and then I used a little bit of 220 grit fine sandpaper to just kind of smooth out some of those 
um, outer edges on the frame and then this is what it looks like I just think this is the cutest frame I love anything scalloped I love the finish on the frame and of course that cute little bird print <laughs> So up next are these DIY lotion bars. I started by creating a little bit of a double boiler situation on my stove and I just used a little bit of water underneath and um, set it on low to medium just so that it would slowly melt everything that I included in the top there. And that's going to be everything that was in the maker box. So it's um, the beeswax, the cocoa butter, the coconut oil, everything like that. So you're just going to gently stir this until it's all nice and melted and then you're going to um, pour it into a measuring cup and let it sit for just a little bit and once it's set for a bit you can go ahead and add in the scent so they sent a bottle of this lavender vanilla and it takes the whole bottle once that's stirred up you can go ahead and pour in the mixture into your molds and let it sit and harden so it takes between two to four hours if you'll when you keep watching you'll notice that i lost a couple of little knobs when i went to pop them out of the molds and it's because I didn't wait quite long enough, I was just too excited about this project. So if I were doing it again, I would probably either set it in the freezer and let it harden really well, or just let it sit overnight and then pop them out the next day. So to patch up these little lotion bars, I took my heat gun and just lightly and quickly melted that mixture on the bottom of those little knobs and then also on the bar and just stuck them right back on and then I let those sit overnight and they were actually on there really well. So I'm going to be packaging these, these up in this little cellophane bag and then giving these as teacher gifts to my kids teachers for Valentine's Day. So I decided I wanted to spruce up these little cotton or muslin bags. These you can buy off Amazon or the craft store, but I'm using one of the stencils that's in the maker box and then this, um, the gel art ink in the color hold your horses it's a really dark gray color but i'm going to apply those on all my bags and then i also decided to create these little gift tags to tattoo the bags so for these i'm using that little be mine stencil and it comes in the maker box on one of the stencil sheets but i think this little stencil is too cute and i just applied the artwork onto some scrapbook paper that i had so i love how these turned out I wanted to mention too, when you're working on a project like this where you're making several stencils or place cards, you don't have to stop and wash your stencil in between every new um, item. You can simply just lay it back down and then um, place your ink on it and then peel it back up. So that saves you a little bit of time. So to complete this little gift that I'm giving the kids teachers, I decided to print off some of these um, rose art prints. These you can get on my website for free. It's a set of eight and they're all different, but it's um, they're four by six in size. So they're super easy to just trim up and then attach them to a gift or you could even frame them for art if you wanted to. But I decided to trim them down and use these cute little um, photo card holders to attach the little art print with my gift cards and then I'm going to tie a little bow on here and package it up with the lotion bars and I just think this is such a fun and cute little Valentine's gift for their teachers. So here's how the little set is going to look together. I love these and you'll see in the next few videos 
Um, on the bags, I did a couple of different stencils on each bag. I also had a stencil that I already had on hand that has a little botanical print and the butterfly. So I used a different stencil for those, but I'll link all of that on my website and in the description. So if you're looking for a certain one, um, you'll know where to find it. But I think this is such a fun little gift idea and you could honestly, you could do it any time of the year. You could do it for a birthday, a neighbor, a friend. Um, everything here works really well for any time of year, except for the little Be Mine card. You might change that <laughs> if you're gonna do it for a different occasion. But I really love this idea. So up next, I wanted to use a couple more of the Valentine stencils and make a cute little Valentine's Day wreath. Um, if you love hearts, you could honestly use this any time of year and just switch out some of the stencils. But I thought it would be fun and festive for Valentine's Day that's coming up. And so I have all of these little wooden hearts that I picked up at Hobby Lobby. I've painted them in different colors of pinks and golds and grays and whites. And then now I'm gonna take some of these stencils from the Maker Box and apply the stencils to my hearts. So you'll kind of watch me. I did lots of different stencils and I have several different hearts because I'm gonna layer up the hearts and then hang them on a wreath. I think all of these hearts would make really cute little gift tags too. See, so some of them have holes in them. The ones that didn't, I'm gonna drill a hole in those, but you could easily drill a hole, pop a piece of twine through there, and then tie it onto your gift bag, and it's just so cute and so inexpensive. So once all of my hearts were done, I took some of this mauve ribbon, and I'm just going to tear it into these strips, and I'm placing a heart on each end of each strip of ribbon, and then I'm gonna kind of, um, just arrange them to where they're varying in lengths and then I'm going to tie them up onto my grapevine wreath. So here you can kind of see how I layered everything and did it in varying lengths so that you kind of get like this long layered um, shabby look. But I grabbed all of those hearts in the center and then tied them onto my grapevine wreath with that um, caramel colored velvet ribbon and just looped it up under there. And then I added in a mauve bow on the top because I love bows and I just wanted to add something um, to kind of balance it out. So I just think this thing is adorable. I love it. It's so easy and so inexpensive to do. Um, it's simply just a lot of wooden hearts from Hobby Lobby in the craft department. And then I tied it all onto a grapevine wreath that I already had on hand and added a bow. So this would look really cute on your front door. You could hang it on a mirror. I had it on the mirror in our bedroom, so I'll show you what that looks like. Thanks so much for watching today's video. I would love to invite you to subscribe if you're new to my channel. I share French country cottage inspiration for all things home, decor, and DIYs. It has been so fun crafting with y'all and I will see you again soon.